And to my utter pleasure and surprise, I didn't register for the draft, and absolutely nothing happened. <laughs> and, and then I had the, uh, talk about the moral elasticity. <laughs> I, I had the dilemma of trying to say, hey, should I raise my hand? Hey, put me in jail. <laughs> or should I try to um, do something else? And as I was learning about psychedelics, I was noticing that I had hoped that my bar mitzvah would turn me into a man. <laughs> And it didn't. <laughs> and the, the, the traditional rituals that we often go through have, for many of us, lost their power. And LSD started making me think, maybe this can help me turn into a man. But it was really much harder than I had anticipated. And I was floundering. And I went to the guidance counselor at our college, and I was just so fortunate that he had a manuscript copy of Realms of the Human Unconscious by Stan Groff. And he gave it to me to read. And once I started reading Stan's work, it all started coming together for me. Because here was a way, through science, I'm very suspicious of religion and uh, kind of things that are not questioned, things that are said to be so divinely inspired that there is no doubt permitted. But here was a way to look at religion, at values, at spirituality through a scientific lens. And there was something about it that was focused, Stan's work on therapy, on healing. It was the practical test. It was reality testing. Can people actually get better? And I felt that here was an antidote to Hitler. Here was a way to really try to delve deep into the psyche, our own and others, and maybe then we could build a safer world on this foundation. And the foundation went down deep to this mystical experience of unity, which can be accessed through psychedelics, through many other areas and ways. Psychedelics are not essential, but for many of us, they have been crucial. And I felt that this would be the better alternative to work on with my life. And I felt since I was a draft resistor, I could never be doctor or a lawyer, I'd never get a socially sanctioned license. So I thought, at age 18, I'm going to become a psychedelic therapist. It's a career that does not require a license <laughs> at the time. Um, and we're hoping, of course, that, that we will be licensing psychedelic therapists in the future. It was the positive alternative. It was creating something that was healing, that was loving. and. I woke up to this, though, just as the research was being shut down. And that was just very disappointing to me, to see that as I finally broke through the prejudices that I'd been educated with and saw value, that there was this massive counter-reaction. And I thought that this would be a place to devote my life's energy. And I figured that this same analysis would be adopted, conducted by hundreds and thousands of other people that they would see here in the psychedelics were tools that we could used to build a healthier world. And it was surprising to me that, that, there, that there was so complete of a, of a squashing throughout the world of this incredibly promising work. A couple years later, after I had made this decision, I had a dream. There was a man who was dying, and he was in a, a, we were in a white room. He was on a bed. He was on his deathbed. And he was saying that he had been through great luck, saved from murder. He was uh, a Holocaust survivor. He'd been part of a mass shooting and a mass grave and had been uh, buried alive and climbed up after a couple days and escaped. And he said that he knew that he was saved for some purpose. And he wasn't sure what that purpose was. But now he knew that it was to tell me to be a psychedelic therapist. And as I heard that, I said to myself, I have already chosen this path. And so you can lay that burden on me, and I can accept it, and you can die peacefully. And, and then he did. And so I think this, for me, explains why I really love to work so much. I feel so grateful to have the freedoms and the opportunities that we have here in the United States. I think if I would have tried this in other countries, many other countries I would have, and many of us would no longer be around here to talk about it. Right now, when I go for therapy, 
my therapist's father was a Nazi. I think one generation down, that for me is the power of the psychedelic experience, to see that we can outgrow the traumas of the past and that we could form these alliances. The UNESCO Charter says, since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. I think many of us have this intuition that there is something about this unit of experience that really can build understanding beneath our separateness. And that if we can help people to reach this level, that then there'll be a better opportunity for dialogue and not such a quick reaction to war and violence. I, I just read a, a newspaper article last week about one of the Iranian dissidents. And he was talking about it's important to replace a culture of martyrdom with a culture of mysticism. And he was speaking about the Sufis as a branch inside the Islamic religion that really is more mystically oriented. And the Sufis are really, um, and the Baha'is are, are having a difficult time. The, the mystics of the world are having a difficult time in confrontation with the fundamentalists. But this is what I believe, and I think many of us, it's what motivated us. And yet, how do we move forward? How do we actually bring this and manifest it. We have to be strategic, we have to be practical, we have to start where there's the little openings in our society. And these openings are in medicine, these openings are in science, and so we have decided to focus at MAPS on MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for post-traumatic stress disorder. I feel it's the combination of drug and clinical indication that has an excellent chance of making it through the regulatory system. In all of your conference packages, there's a prospectus for our three-year plan, uh, like our $2 million three-year plan for studies in seven different uh, pilot studies, five more countries, with the goal of moving in a couple years to what's called an end of phase two meeting at the FDA. And that's where you bring all of your data and you say, here's how we've solved the double-blind problem. Here's how we've maximized our therapeutic benefit. Here's the patients that we want to work with. And you propose to the FDA and you say, this is what we want to do, and also the European Medicines Agency. And if they agree, then we have the, the, the blueprint. Then we price it out. Then we try to implement it. It's another $8 million, six years, however. But where we're moving now is towards this end of phase two meeting. And we appeal and look forward to your support as we move forward doing this. Now, this conference is so rich and so incredible with the number of speakers, with the content, that there's no way that any of us can even take it all in. We are recording everything. We're going to be editing it. It's all going to go up for, on the internet in a couple months. We're also recording here for tapes that you can get afterwards right immediately for things that you have not been able to see. But what I'd encourage you to do is to listen to the silences. Listen to what people are trying to say behind the words. What I think, what I hear is a message of hope, that these tools can really help us delve into the human spirit, inexhaustible sources of energy, renewable energy, and innovation, and intelligence, and creativity, and art, that there's something that we're all trying to point to. And it's so hard to do so. It's ineffable, and we'll try our best. But do your best, really, to listen to the voice of the heart in the silences. And then we can take that with us as we go home. But now we have this precious opportunity of these three days to work together, to think together, to think critically, to build a community and strengthen our connections. And if we do so, and we will do so, we will be able to expand and integrate psychedelic science in the 21st century. Thank you. Thank you.